Got some more Lady Precious stream for you. Okay, where was I last time? Okay. We take the same road as Captain Saping Quay and arrive just a moment before him at a place quite near his cave home, where you hear him shouting, Look out, a horse is coming, and then he appears. Say says, When one is anxious to get home, he travels both in daytime and by starlight. Bidding goodbye to the princess not long ago, I have now arrived at the little hill not far from my own door. He dismounts and ties the reins of his horse to a tree. Let me tie my horse under the shadow of a willow tree and ask those ladies where my ladies there about my wife. He calls aloud, My respect to you ladies. A voice off stage says, The same to you, sir. Have you lost your way? Say says, No, how could one be lost in such a highway as this? I want to inquire, madam, about someone. A voice off stage says, To what family does the person you want belong? Say says, She is the daughter of the Prime Minister Wang and his wife of Say Ping Kui. A voice off stage says, Oh, precious stream of the Wang family, I'll call her out for you, sir. She calls, My third sister, cause someone wants you. Precious says, off stage, thank you very much, I am coming. She appears from the left with a little basket on her arm. Though we haven't seen her for 18 years, yet she does not look 18 years older. Of course she is greatly changed, but considering the long and hard time she has gone through, we cannot but admire how wonderfully she has managed to preserve her looks. Say says to himself, there is someone coming. She looks rather like my wife, but I must be careful to avoid being guilty of taking another man's wife as my own. Now that I have arrived at my home, I must be very polite to her. My respects to you, madam. He clasps his hands and bows, wilts, the, wilts she curtsies. May I have a word with you? Precious says, and mine to you. Have you lost your way, sir? No. Say says no. No one could be lost in such a place as this. I want to find someone. Precious says, Only famous people are known to me. Say says, She whom I seek is very is a very famous person. She is the daughter of the Prime Minister Wang, Prime Minister Wang and his wife, Say Ping Kui. Lady Precious Stream, she is by name. Precious says, Are you a relative of hers, sir? Say says, No, I'm not. Precious says, then an old friend of hers? Say says, no, not that. Precious says, if you are neither her relative nor her old friend, why are you inquiring for her? Say says, oh, there is a reason, madam. I have been serving in the same company as her husband, who has entrusted me with a letter to her. That is why I am inquiring for her, madam. Precious says, Precious Dreams is lives not far from here. Please give that letter to me and I'll deliver it to her for you, sir. Say says, my oldest brother, Sing Ping Kui, said that the letter must be handed to her in person by myself. Precious says, if you can't find her by yourself, if you can't find her yourself, Say says, then I must take it back to him again. Precious says, please excuse me a moment. Say says, certainly. Precious says, aside, I should like to confess and get that letter at once, but I am in such rags that I am ashamed to do so. And if I don't, he will certainly not give me that letter. Oh, how cool that for 18 long years separation we have never met and have not been able to correspond. What shall I do? She taps her forehead with her fingers. Ah, I have it to him. Well, sir, you understand riddles? Say says a little. Precious says, "Do you want to see Lady Precious? Do you want to see Precious Stream?" Say says, "Yes." Precious says, "Now, if you look far, Say says she is a thousand miles away." Precious says, "Yes," and if you look near, Say says she is before you. Then I am speaking to Mrs. Say, the famous daughter of the Prime Minister Wang. 
Precious says, oh, no, not the famous, but the only humble wife of Sing Ping Kuei. Sei says, clasping his hands and bowing, my respects to her. Precious says, returning the salute with a curtsy, you have already paid your respects. Sei says, over politeness does no harm. Precious says, smiling, well said. Now my husband's letter, please? Sei says, one mo moment, will you excuse me a minute? Precious says, certainly. Say says, aside, wait a minute. I was married to her only for a month and have been absent from home for 18 years. I don't know what kind of woman she really is. Let me try to flirt with her. If she proves to be a good and virtuous woman, I'll tell her who I am, and she will be happily reunited. If she proves to be a woman of easy virtue, I'll disown her and go back to the royal princess of... Oh, there's a photo here. The royal princess of the western regions. I know that many ancient worthies tested the virtue of their own wives, so why shouldn't I? To her. Ah, where on earth is that letter? Precious says, where is it? Say says, it is lost, madam. Precious says anxiously, how can it be lost? Where did you put it? Say says, hey, I put it up with my arrow quiver, madam. Precious says, isn't that a secure place? Say says, yes, it is, madam. Precious says, then how could you have lost it? Say says, well, when I was coming not far from here, I happened to take out an arrow and shoot at a wild goose. Precious says childishly, why would you shoot a poor wild goose? He says, I was empty and wanted something to eat, madam. Precious says, furious, yes, empty, you have no heart. The wild goose has eaten it. Say says, oh, why should there be such a fuss about a mere letter? Why scold me on account of it, madam? Precious says, don't you know that a letter from one who loves you is worth all the money in the world? You would remember your sage said. I examine myself three times every day to see whether I have done truly and loyally my best to my friend, and you have lost the letter to your friend. She weeps. I am heartbroken. Say says, don't take it serious, madam. If you are so anxious about the letter, I'll tell you something. I remember that, isn't it? Precious says, ah, I know. It must be that my husband had set some money with the letter, and you, having spent all the money on your way, destroyed it. So that is why you can't remember something from it. He says, don't say that, my dear madam, because when my eldest brother, say, Ping Kui, was writing the letter, I happened to be high by him, packing my things. So I glanced over his shoulder, and I saw a few lines, madam. Precious says, compromising, then your curiosity may prove useful. Say says, Fury, curious or not, I should not have lost the letter. Precious says, please tell me what you remember. Say says, listen carefully, reciting. On the mid-autumn night, under the bright moonlight, Precious, stop. Don't you have lamps in your camps? Say says, how can we have lamps there, madam? In a camp, all we have to depend on for light is the bright moonlight, reciting, reciting again. Sang Ping Kui presents his compliments to his dear wife. Precious says, and mine to him. How has he been lately? Say said, very well. Precious says, safe and sound. Say says, safe and sound. Precious says, how are his meals? Say says, they are badly cooked by the soldiers. Precious says, how about his clothes? Say says, he has to had to wash and mend them himself reciting again, and begs to tell her that he has been very unfortunate lately. He has suffered severe torture. Precious says, ah, torture. He was beaten. Say says, yes, beaten, madam. Precious says, how many strokes did he receive? Say says, 40 strokes in all. Precious says, wiping her tears, oh, my poor husband. Say says, don't cry, madam. There are still worse things coming, reciting. The other day, a horse under his care was lost. Precious says, was it the government horse or privately owned? Say says, how can there be any privately owned horses in a camp? Of course, a government one. Precious says, that being so, I suppose he will have to pay for it. Say says, how can he avoid paying for it? Precious says, but there can be... F where can he find money to pay for it? Say says, he is sure to be able to find it in some way or other. 
reciting, and because of having to pay for the horse, he has to borrow ten pieces of silver, pointing to himself, borrowed from me. Precious sto says, stop, allow me to ask you what is your rank. Say says, I'm a ca I am captain. Precious says, and my husband, Say Pinquez, also a captain. Precious says, if you're both captains, you should get the same amount of pay. Then how could you be able to lend him money whilst he has none? Say says, don't you see there is a reason, madam? My eldest brother, Saint Pinque, is a born spendthrift who squanders all his pay. Whilst I, having been born in a humble family, have been accustomed to save all I get. In this way, I was able to lend him the money to pay for the horse. Precious says, that is not true. My husband was also born in a humble family, and he wouldn't know how to spend his money even if he tried. Say says, laughing, ha ha, this is the first time I've heard that he is also of humble birth. Precious says, oh dear, he is laughing at me. Say, with compound interest, the debt due to me has come to twenty pieces of silver, of which he has never paid a farthing to me. Precious says, you ought to ask him to repay you. Say says, you can't get blood of it out of a stone. Precious says, insist on payment. Say says, that would ruin our friendship. Precious says, what is that hanging in your girdle, sir? Say says, my sport. Precious says, then draw your sword if he refuses to pay. Say says, the penalty of cold-blooded murder is death. Precious says, the why mention the debt to me? Say says, because I can bear, can't bear to forego it, and it has something to do with you. She starts, I went to his camp to demand the money the other day, and he said that he has a wife at a home called Lady Precious Jean of the Wang family. Precious says, furious, what? Let me ask you, has Precious Steam ever owed you anything formerly? Say says, no, nothing. Precious says, has he borrowed any, has she borrowed anything from you recently? Say says, no, nothing. Precious says, has she never borrowed from you formally or recently? Why should her name be mentioned? Say says, well, let me ask you now, as our old proverb says, father's debts, Precious says, the son pays, and the husband debts, Precious says, the wife, the wife doesn't care a fig for them. Say says, well said, but still the wife has to pay for them in, other, in, another, in some other way. Having no ready money, my eldest brother Say agreed to sell his wife. And you know, madam, he did not need to be afraid of there being no purchasers. So a bargain was immediately made with a certain officer. Precious says, appalled, ah, and who is this certain officer? Say says, eh, eh, with a smile. Do you understand riddles, madam? Precious says, a little, Say says, now if you look, f if you look far, Precious says, he is a thousand miles away. Say says, yes, and if you look near, Precious says, have you the audacity to say that is, that it is you? Say says, eh, eh, I haven't the audacity, but I have the proof. Precious says, what is your proof? He said, in the form of a marriage contract. Precious says, show it to me. Say says, hesitating. Yes, no, I am sure you are as virtuous as you are beautiful, and if once you have it in your hands, you would tear it in the fragments. What could I do then? I could lose both my money and my wife. Precious says, what do you suppose to do? Say says, I want to request you to go with me to someone's house not far from here, and let us invite some old men to be witness and show the contract before them. Precious says, then it is really true that there is this contract. Say says, can what is really true be false? Precious says, oh, cruel, on second thoughts. No, I still can't believe it. Who are the witnesses of the contract? Say says, they are, they are Sue the Dragon Dranical, Wei the Tiger General, and Wang Young the Prime Minister. Precious says, nonsense. I won't believe it now, because they are all my near relatives, and they would certainly not allow my husband to sell me. Let us go to them and prove your contract is fake. Say says, no, I won't go to them because there's enmi enmity between uh, them and me, and they certainly won't side with me. Precious says, ha, then you know my relatives. 
Though I am poor, my father is rich. Let us make out how much the capital and interest amount to now, and my father will send the money to you, even if you are as far distant as the western regions. I won't detain you now. Goodbye, and wait for the money in the western regions. She turns to go back. Say says, barring away, no, no, it took me 48 days to travel from the western regions to here, and I have come here specially not for the money but for the beauty frightened sa uh, precious says frightened if you go on uttering nonsense and insulting me i'll call for help and have you arrested then you will regret your behavior say says if you prefer our case to be dealt with legally you are as good as my wife precious says oh what impudence to hell with your case say going nearer to her as she retreats if you really are such a virtuous woman as you pretend to be, you ought to stay at your home. Why do you stand in a public place and exchange pleasantries with passers-by? I love you. I'm going to kidnap you and carry you off to the western regions. Precious says aside, Oh, I am so frightened. The man is a beast who does not know what matters mean. What shall I do? There is no help within reach. Let me think. She taps her forehead with her finger. Ah, I have it. I'll blind him. To him. Hello, sir. Someone is coming over there. Say says, turning away. Where? Precious says, picking up a handful of visible sand. She throws it at him and runs away. Goodbye. Say, a very happy man. Ha ha, a virtuous woman indeed. No use flirting with her. It's not very far, so I will not ride, but walk to my cave to meet her. He takes the whip and leads his horse away to the left. Precious Dream immediately emerges from the right. The audience are now expected to regard the cave as before them. Precious says, running around the front stage, It's too bad he's following me. Say, appearing and following me, I am your husband. Say, Ping Kuei. Precious says, entering the cave and closing the door. Let me shut the door and bolt it. She indicates his action by placing a chair with its back to the audience. Say, dropping his whip and knocking at the back of the chair. Open the door. You are shutting out your own husband. Precious says, you said but a short time ago that you were an officer of the same regiment as my husband, and now you are my husband. You are out of your senses. Say says, oh no, let me prove to you that I am your husband. Don't you remember that you helped me with money and told me to be present on the second day of February when I received the embroidered ball? We were driven out by your father and lived in this cave. Then I shot and killed the man devouring tiger and was made captain joining the western punitive expedition and I was ordered to depart at once. I came back to tell you the news. I couldn't bear to leave you alone whilst you were equally loath to let me go. Time was pressing, and I had to cut the reins of my horse, which you held tightly in your hands. When we, we then parted, and that was eighteen years ago. <coughs> Precious says, wiping her tears. Did you receive my letter? Say says, oh yes, I received it only a short time ago. That is why I hurried home. If you don't believe me, here is that very letter. Precious says, opening the door a little. Let me look at, closing the door again. No, how can you be my husband with such a long beard? Say says, why not? Precious says, my husband is a very handsome young man. Say says, thank you, my third sister, but you ought to say he used to be handsome and young. Don't you think that 18 long years of hardship in the western regions would make him look rather old? Allow his beard to grow but an inch each year. It is a very reasonable and considerate allowance, and naturally comes so long stroking his beard with his hands in eighteen years' time. Take yourself, for instance, my third sister. You are quite different from the young girl who threw the ball from the pavilion. Consulting a looking glass and tell me what you think. Precious says, don't you know that there is no looking glass in, this, uh, in the humble cave? <clears throat> Say says, oh, I forgot, look into the bass in the water, as he always did formerly. Precious says, it's a long time since I looked into a bass in the water, not caring how I looked. She looks into an invisible bass and, oh, horrible, 
I am terribly aged. I couldn't call myself Precious Stream now if I met myself on the street. Stasis, but I do. Now open the door and let me in. Precious says, opening the door a little and stretching out a hand. Now let me... Show me the letter first. Say says, giving her the letter which she takes. Here you are, my third sister. Precious says, closing the door again. Yes, this is the letter. All oh, my heavens. Say, then why do you close the door again? Precious says, I will open the door only on one condition. Say says, what is your condition, please? Precious says, a very simple one. I only want you to go backwards one step. Say, doing so. All right, I have done so. Precious says, another step, please. Say says, doing so. All right, now open the door. Precious says, one step more, please. Say says, finding himself standing at the very edge of the stage. No, I can't. I have come to the end of things. Precious says, tragically, you have not come to the end of things. I'm sure you would never come back to me. Say says, oh, nonsense. Precious says, and after you had deserted me for 18 years, you insulted me the moment you met me. What is there to live for? I'd rather die than go back to such a husband. Say says, please don't say that. I entreat you to forgive me. Precious says, no. Say says, entreat you on my knees. As Madam has prophesied, he proves to be a very good henpecked husband. He kneels on one knee. Look. I am paying you my highest respects in the presence of thousands. Precious says, peeping through the crevice of the cave door, which is represented by the bars on the back of the chair, just as a western lady would peep through the keyhole on such an occasion. No, I won't look at you, but how about your other knee? I thought you said you were on your knees. Say said, I beg your pardon, his other knee is on the ground now. Precious says, ah, oh, that is better. She opens the door by, by removing the chair first. Come in, my dear. She helps him up. Say, getting up and going in. Thank you, my dear. He sits on the chair provided for him. Precious says, sitting down too. To what rank have you been promoted after these 18 years? Say says, a little piqued. Eh? When your husband has returned from thousands of miles away, the first question you put on him is not but hi about his health, nor his requiring food or drink, but about his rank? Ugh. What is rank compared with food and drink? Can you eat and drink it? Precious says, As you have not said a word about food and drink, I thought it a subject you were not interested in. Besides, I haven't been very frequently in touch with food and drink during those eight, these 18 years, so I am liable to forget them. Say so says, what do you mean? Do you mean to tell me that you haven't had enough to eat and drink during my absence? I remember having made a handsome provision for you just before my depa departure. Precious says, what was it? Say so says, 10 hundred weight of firewood and 5 hundred weight of rice. Precious says, imitating his tone, Ten hundred weight of firewood and five hundred weight of rice. Even presuming that they had everlasting quantities, how could they possibly outlast the wear and tear of time in all these eighteen years? So he said, granted, but you ought to have gone to your father and brother-in-law away for additional supplies. Precious says, they said that your pay had ceased and offered to make a loan to me, which I refused. So he says, splendid, goodbye. He prepares to go. Precious says, alarmed, where are you going? Ceases to Ex Excellency the Prime Minister's house. Precious says, catching his sleeve and leading him back to his chair, Don't go. My father is not very well. Ceases, what is the matter with him? Precious says, the common sick sickness of great men who don't like to see their poor relatives. Ceases, it doesn't matter. I haven't had that kind of sickness and I will condescend to see him. Precious says, what are you talking about? You condescend to see His Excellency the Prime Minister? Say says, yes, we have to sometimes. Precious says, what do you mean? I says, very lightly, I mean that he is so old and bad-tempered that I will not have him to serve me if he offered to drive my horse. Precious says, smiling. <coughs> Sorry. Fix that. Okay.
Precious says, smiling, please don't talk as if you were dreaming. Wake up, my dear. C says, I'm a practical man and has never a dream and was never a dreamer. What I say are facts. Every word is true. Precious says, do you say it, it is a fact that his excellency's prime minister is willing to offer to drive your horse? Ridiculous. The king is the only man in the world whom he does he serves. C says, yes, that is quite true, but I do not have that. I am not a king. Precious says, nearly out of her senses, you a king? C says, yes, the only king in the western regions, and I regret to say that I have not a very vast territory. Precious says, hardly believing in ear, her ears, only the king of the western regions. This seems incredible. What proof have you? C says, what proof do you want? Precious says, show me your royal seal. C says, nonsense. I have never heard of anyone having asked a king to prove himself as a king by showing his royal seal. Precious says, but I have heard and actually seen that done many times. C says, have you? Where was it done and who did it? Precious says, childishly on stage, done by the players. C says, oh, but we are not on stage and we are not players. Precious says, our stage is, our sad just said, the world is a stage, human beings are merely players, and life is a poor, sad play. Besides, I had never seen a royal sea, and I want very much to see one. Do show it to me. He said, all right. If I have the royal seal, Precious says, show it to me, and I will believe you are king. Say says, and if I haven't the royal seal, Precious says, then seal your lips so that you will utter no more nonsense. C says, do you really want to see the royal seal? Precious says, very much. C says, then let me adjust my hat and dust my jacket first. He produces the royal seal. Here is the seal of the king of the western regions. Precious says, receiving it in both hands and after examining it carefully, hands it back to say, Oh, indeed, the royal seal of the king of the western regions. I must now kneel down before your majesty to ask your favor. She kneels down. Say, speaking majestically, who is she that kneels before me? Precious says humbly, she is your majesty's humble maid, precious stream of the Wang family. Say says, and for what purpose have you come? Precious says, to see your majesty's favor. Say says, you used to be very harsh and impolite towards me when you addressed me on the spot not far from the cave. I will not bestow you any favor. Precious says, your humble maid did not know it was your majesty. Say, pleased, if you have known, then you would not have used such harsh and impolite words, would you? Precious says, had she known when then she would have used more harsh and more impolite words. Say says, surprise, indeed, no favors at all. That settles the matter. <clears throat> Precious prepared for the worst. Then now she must use the most harsh and the most impolite words, wretched at thou art. Say said, covering ears with both hands, speak no more. I am not, I am about to bestow on you some favor. Hear me. Precious says, amiable again, yes, your majesty, say, by the order of his majesty, the king of the western regions, lady, precious stream of the Wang family, is to be crowned her majesty, the queen of the western regions. Precious says, thanks, your majesty. She heaves a deep sigh, at last, say, helping her to get up. I have been neglecting you all these 18 years. Precious said, I have been thinking of you all the time. C says, aren't you glad that you are at last united? Precious says, yes, but I'm afraid that it is only a dream. Please pinch me to make sure. C says, nonsense. Can't you see the bright sun there? You are not dreaming. I can't bear to pinch you. Precious says, then I m must pinch you. She pinches him. C says, ouch, ouch, you are mad. Precious says, smiling, then I am not dreaming. I am not dreaming. Say says, let us retire, my queen. And they retire. And now we're getting on the act four of Lady Precious Dream, and I'll start that another time. I think this is the longest 
time I've managed. Pardon my voice and cracking in that drink. Well, ciao.